Hello, and welcome to segment 19. Um, we will cover, in this segment, we'll cover everything up to the Water Temple. So, should be fun. We're gonna head to Zora's River first off, and, um, head to the Beanstalk. Heard that magic bean plant thing that floats around, yeah. It's right at the entrance, sort of. Um, and just jump off uh, near the boulder on top of one of the high cliffs and, you know, jump across this gap and play the sun song. Uh, we want to make it night because there is a gold sculpture on this wall. So that is the first thing we're going to get. Use the hook shot because it's a little out of reach. Not a big deal. And uh, now we're just basically heading towards Sora's domain. Uh, and grabbing another gold sculpture on the way. So, just head up river and avoid flying rocks. That is suggested. Um, then right after this wooden bridge, um, you want to jump up on the fence and use your hook shot to grab a gold sculpture directly above you on the wall. Mm. That is the second one, or the, the last one in this. Uh, area that we need to get, and we'll just continue along the path, and, you know, we're going to step on that, uh, like, insignia, I guess, and play Zelda's Lullaby. I played it really fast, I don't know how I did that, it was, it was cool, but, um, after that, the waterfall will open again, and Link is really short right there, I don't know why, but it's okay. Um, so we jump inside, and, oh my god, it's all frozen. I know you guys already knew that, but whatever. For shock value, I guess. Um, so we're going to head up into the back. You'll notice King Zora's got all this red ice stuff on him, whatever. We'll get to that after. Um, but in Zora's Fountain, uh, we want to head to where Jabu Jabu used to be and um, jump across floating icebergs to get a heart piece. Uh, first, the, actually the only heart piece is on the right side. You'll know it because you can see it from like anywhere on the map, but um, you just have to be careful. It, it's, I made it kind of look easy. I, it took me a few tries to jump without falling. If you fall, you kind of have to go back to the beginning, but um, whatever. Now instead of you know heading right, you just want to head left. And these platforms are just like spinning in or spinning while being stationary, so they're not too tough to jump across, but eventually you'll get to the opening of the ice cavern and this is a mini dungeon, I guess. Um starts off we can break those stalagmites, I don't know, with our sword and then just keep heading through. Um break more icicle thingies, and this room has statues that shoot out breaths of ice at you. Um, you basically have to hack and slash them before they can freeze you. I guess I kind of got lucky. I always get frozen in this room at least once, but I didn't this time. And this guy actually um, is invisible, and he can like move around. I pretty much did really well in that room, and I doubt I'll be able to repeat that if we ever have to do this again, which we won't, but whatever. Um, so just keep heading forward, or straight along the path, and um, it'll lead you to another room after you break some more icicles. This one has a spinning blade of doom. Uh, we just have to collect all of the silver rubies in order to move on, and you can try and avoid the um, spinning blades of doom, but I, I doubt you'll be able to. It's too difficult. Um, there are three ice skulls here that cover another silver ruby that we need, and directly above that is gold sculpture, which we use the hook shot again. And um, it was just on the edge of the room, so not too hard to spot. Uh, and the last one is just ab above the uh, spinning blade, so we have to climb up the exit where we're heading and uh, jump off, get the. Ruby, and that wasn't fair. That I, I didn't have any time to avoid that, so I got hit. It happens. But now we go through the door that we opened by collecting all the silver rubies, and 
Um, this part, I just kind of like walk by everything. I mean, you can kill stuff. I really didn't, because I didn't have to. Um, but you get to a big room with uh, bats all over the place, so I like to try and take them out first. Um, yeah, free aiming is very, very difficult on N64, or the Wii version, which I'm on, but, you know, kind of almost got all three of them. I thought it was it was pretty cool. I kind of you have to wait for those guys to shoot their ice and then you know go hack and slash them once they're done. But uh, I didn't want to take out the final bat before it hit me and you know froze me in place and I didn't want to take damage. So uh, once I killed that bat, kill I hack and slash the ice statue to death and that was all good and fun. Um, hopping across the platforms. This is the blue eye, the blue fire, sorry, um, that we can use to burn the red ice. Makes sense, sort of. I don't know why there would be red ice, but okay. Uh, so what we gotta do is, sadly, we have to empty the bottles of fairies. I didn't really want to do this, but I guess it's the best option. It makes it going, makes going through this temple a little bit easier. So once you you know fill up three or four bottles I recommend doing four I only did three turns out I needed to actually come back and get another one later which kinda took longer than it needed to but whatever um... And I'll kill the ice statue once you know it doesn't breathe ice on you and uh... use one of the blue fires to um... burn the red ice around the chest and this would be the dungeon map so now we get to see an annoying rectangle in the bottom of our screen again. That'll be fun. Um, now we can refill our bottle again, um, so that's what I'm going to do. Probably a good idea, because then we won't have to keep refilling stuff. Uh, in other places, I guess, I don't know. Probably not a big deal. But that's pretty much the end of this room. We can just exit the way we came. And, uh, Again, through this part, you want to avoid everything instead of getting hit by everything, like like that. And wait, wait, and that. Um, so yeah, I don't recommend that. But once you get into the room with the spinning blade again, there's a burnable area on the on the left. Um, in here is actually a heart piece, the compass, and a gold skulltula. So yeah. You definitely need to go in here. Um, once you burn that, like, red web, I guess it was, I'm not really sure, um, get into a room where you can see the blue flame. The icicles fall from the floor, so you kind of want to be careful. And make sure you take out uh, any bats you see before they get active, because they'll fly in the blue fire and, you know, become really annoying. Um, so, on the right, there will be heart piece inside red eyes, definitely want to get that. Um, I don't know why you can see the heart piece through the red eyes, but whatever. Should be, I don't know. Um, and directly above that was a gold sculpture, I'll get that afterwards, but um, on the right side you break some ice skulls and then take out the rest of the bats in this room. And in that red ice is um, the compass, so want to get that as well. Let's burn that down. And I think the icicles in this room, like, respawn constantly. I don't know why. But they just keep... I keep seem, uh, keep finding new ones. I don't know. There's the compass. And across the room... See? Icicles. Ugh, it's annoying. Grab some more blue fire so we're full again. And where the heart piece was, just turn right and look up. It'll be on the one of the columns. Grab the sculpture. And now we are going to head back to the room. See? They def the icicles definitely respawn. That's annoying. Oh my god. But yeah, the spinning blade go to the opposite side of that room. And you can burn that down with the blue fire. After that, I'll just head through a small path. I don't think there's any dangerous 
things in this one, except for annoying icicles again. But um, that was.